Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome all of you here tonight to the County Commissioner's meeting, those of you who are here, and those who are at home watching us on TV. Um, we'll have our uh, call to order, please, Commissioners. Do we have to um, excuse Mr. Hamm? Um, yes, or his vote will count with the, effect, with the majority. I'm not sure if anyone has heard from him. I don't know. That was why I was at. Usually we hear. Move, we excuse you. Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Mr. Garris, I don't think you was winning. You voted. No. Um, okay. We, if you will please stand for our invocation and pledge. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening for your many blessings upon us. We thank you for the opportunity of gathering together as a community. We thank you for each one that is here this evening, and we pray your blessings might be upon us as a board as we negotiate the issues of the county. Help us to make those decisions that are best suited for those that we represent. These blessings we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion, motion to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, let's vote. <coughs> Commissioner Johnson, if you'll hit the confirm button, please. Thank you. Um, the first <coughs> item on our agenda is a public hearing. And Mr. Rhodes, I think you're in charge. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. We have one public hearing for your consideration tonight is for conditional use permit uh, for residential daycare facility. And just to remind you of the definition of a residential daycare facility, it is one that would uh, provide care for between three and eight children. So again, this is an in-home daycare facility. Uh, again, while you're considering the conditional use permit, uh, this is to be considered using uh, quasi-judicial procedures. And uh, remember, if it is appealed, any decisions would be appealed to the Superior Court. A uh, number of items that we run through with these types of requests. Uh, again, we're here to establish the facts concerning this particular conditional use re uh, request. Any witnesses should be placed under oath and we're looking to uh, ascertain or pull together uh, evidence and this will go into a detailed record no ex parte communication and again all uh, appeals will go to superior court so at this time i'd ask the clerk to swear any in any witnesses okay if anyone will come forward who would like to speak towards this um, in any way they will have to be sworn in to speak no one's coming forward. Do you have to be sworn in? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? I swear to tell the truth. Uh, the information for your consideration, uh, again, is for a residential daycare facility, and this is located on Stantonsburg Road, uh, a little bit to the east of Farmville. Uh, just past the overpass on Stantonsburg Road. Uh, the comprehensive land use plan designates the area that uh, we're looking at tonight as suburban residential. One uh, additional condition that uh, is going along with this request is that the hours of operation be designated between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. <coughs> uh, this map uh, actually shows the current zoning for the area. Again, Stantonsburg Road just happens to be the dividing line between rural agricultural in the darker green where the site is located and rural residential on the Farmville side of um, Stantonsburg Road in the lighter green. Uh, the existing land uses in the area, again the green area showing primarily undeveloped areas uh, and you can see pretty much road frontage being developed for residential purposes in the tan color here. And again here's the site in question which has a residence on the lot. 
Um, in our zoning ordinance, we do have certain requirements <coughs> that go along with this type of use. Um, there has to be security fencing in the um, playground area, uh, certain locational requirements, and also the hours of operation that we've already uh, suggested being between 6 a and 11 p.m. Uh, also, for these types of requests, there are several different criteria that need to be considered in the request. Uh, the first being, will the material, will it, will this use materially endanger the public health or safety? Uh, staff says it will not. Will it injure the adjoining or abutting property values? Again, it's a residential use. We feel like it will not uh, cause any harm to the values of the adjacent properties. Will it be in harmony with the area? Again, residential use in a residential area. We feel like it will be in concert there. Is it in conformity with the plans of the county? It is. And so with that, Madam Chair, we're suggesting that uh, you have two motions tonight to acknowledge the, land, uh, the conditional use permit as being complete and complying with the zoning ordinance and also subject to the standards of the ordinance plus the one condition for the hours of operation between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. Okay, do we have to open the public hearing? Yes. If that's okay, so the public hearing is formally open. If there's anyone who was sworn in who would like to speak and had no one, Mr. Rhodes, unless you have something else you'd like to add. Okay, well, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, any comments? Madam Chair. Questions? Yes. Just one question, James. The, you mentioned that joining property owners. They've been notified of this, correct? Yes, sir. Again, we post a uh, sign on the property and also notify those that have property within 100 feet. I would move we approve it. The two okay. motions. The two motions. Second. Two or three statements. Okay, Please. let's get a second. Excuse okay, me. we got second. one. Did you get that, Madam Clerk? Okay. Mr. James. All right, on this particular one, you said to 11 o'clock at night. But they could not go on the outside after what time? We do not regulate that. All right. What is the age? This is what I'm concerned with. What's the age <coughs> of these uh, these people? They can be from infant on to whatever child care, you know, whether it could be a, even a teenager. That's what I'm afraid of. Solved. A lot of these people work. Now, we haven't been approving up until 11 o'clock. Isn't this the person? Yes, yes, yes we, we have. have. Yes, we have. And we, and we don't say anything? <laughs> We've even gone to midnight. Oh, you have? Yes, sir. And you haven't had any problems about at night? We've had no complaints sleep. to date. No, okay. sir. Well, that's good. That's no, no comment then. Most of these places are not, they don't have lighting at night outside anyway. So. I just think about the okay. time to come. Yes. Okay, any, um, any other comments? Okay, then um, let's vote, please. All in favor of the motion to approve both motions. Thank you. Passage unanimously. Thank you. Okay, our next item is uh, our presentation and recognition of our Eagle Scouts. I'll entertain a motion to so move. Second. approve these resolutions. Okay, let's vote. Call the scout forward when we get there. <coughs> okay, Mr. Manor, could you can proceed? Right. Well, it's our pleasure again once tonight to present four young men in Pitt County with the uh, a certificate to honor your achievement within the Boy Scouts of America in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And as we call you forward, if you'll come forward with your parents or friends or Scout Master, whoever you brought with you, we'd like to recognize them as they have helped you in, in your road to becoming an Eagle Scout. So if we'll call the first one, Devin Scott Caden, if you'll come forward, please. The son of one of our county employees, Great. John Caden. Well, if you'll just stand Welcome. right over there. Right here, right, here, right. Yeah. You're in the center. <laughs> I'll go ahead and read this. Okay, you please. It's entitled, Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Devin Scott Caton, Troop 9046, for achieving the Eagle Scout Award. His project, he dug up and replaced the shrubs in horticultural beds in front of Walcoats Elementary School here in Greenville. This is presented this 20, 
This 26th day of March 2012 by the Pitt County Board of Commissioners, signed by our Chairman Beth B. Ward. And congratulations. Let's you present yes. that. Thank you, Doug. Congratulations, Debbie. Very proud of you. And parents, proud of you all too. Debbie, anybody want to thank you? Anything you want to say? Just glad it's up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right, congratulations. All right, next we have Keelan Preston Patterson. If I pronounce that first name correctly. Okay. Again, we have a similar certificate for you. And for your project, you made 15 dog beds for the Pitt County Humane Society. And again, we have a certificate um, so named and dated for you as well. Ms. Ward, Today. Chairman. Thank you very much Thank for you. doing this. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You want to say anything? <laughs> no, thank you. He says. Okay. Yeah. okay, next, Sydney Brooks, Spain. And as it comes up, I'd like just to um, announce that you know nationally, only about two percent of all Boy Scouts actually earn the Eagle Scout rank. Here in Pitt County, we um, actually have probably four to six percent of our Scouts actually mm -hmm. earn this rank. So we're proud to be able to call these young men up and to recognize you. Uh, for Mr. Spain, he built a volleyball court at the Mount Pleasant Christian Church on Staten House Road for the members, church members to use. So, congratulations. Very good. Good idea. Thank you very Thank much you. and congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. And he's getting away. He doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> I can tell I can. <laughs> And our last Eagle Scout tonight, Matthew John Yaninsky. He smiled. I'm not sure whether it's because you got it right or. It's close. Y Yanitsky? Uh, okay. Yeah? okay. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. For Matthew's project, he did a project at the Aiden Grifton High School track and, and field where he built cement sleeves for the, for the poles that hold the, di the disc discus throwers. Rebuilt the. Tokuk? Tokuk. 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 Tokuk trunk. Built the box for the sand in the standing in the standing long jump as well. So I read that on his application and I didn't know what it was. You <laughs> may have you may have to tell us. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to say um, yeah, I'd like to uh, thank my uh, parents because they've been very supportive uh, throughout my whole uh, scouting experience and uh, my scoutmaster Sam Mills and uh, Carl Price has also been very instrumental in my uh, scouting career. Good. Great. Very good. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. item is the public address to the board. Do we have anybody signed yes. up? Madam Chairman, at this point in time, nobody signed up unless there's somebody in the audience who'd like is to come forward. Is there anyone? Forward. Yes, if you'd like to come forward. If you'll identify yourself, please, and where you live, that would be great. Thank you. We have a three-minute My name is Mike Leach. live at 103 Briarwood, and I had the privilege of being here two weeks ago. Um, I recognize I've only got three minutes, but like to thank Neil Elks and the U.S. Marshal's Office for the fine job that was done rounding up a bunch of people. And I hope we can get you a little more tax money this year so you can do it again. <laughs> uh, the reason I'm here is I'm disappointed in myself because when I did appear two weeks ago, I evidently didn't convince people that I believe we have a major problem with the Pitt County taxation valuations this year. Uh, I sent letters, commissioners all have them, uh, Mr. Elliott has them, but basically when property values decrease $24 trillion across the U.S., it's kind of remarkable that Pitt County didn't decrease 24% like the rest of the country. And in Old West Haven, which I live in, our actual values went up 12% in the worst economic recession we've ever lived through. 
Now, rather than just being here, I brought along a lady I'd like to stand up, Margie Fry, just so you can put a face to the name. Margie's property increased $53,000, which is basically 65% better than the rest of the U.S. And she's lived in her house for 41 years and made no major improvements. And uh, quite frankly, uh, her taxes are going to go up. Mine came in $52,000 ahead of where I was last year, which was only a 32% increase. But again, no major additions. Uh, we did add to the neighborhood four neighborhood landlords from the state, and we added two out-of-state neighborhood landlords. This was not because they're speculating in land. This is because they were unable to sell their houses for anywhere close to the old market values before they were raised. Uh, I went out, got four independent appraisals for houses that, that showed that the values were definitely far below what the reassessed values came in. Mine personally came in at $178,000, but even after the evaluation process, I was advised my property still worth 216. Just doesn't make sense, and I recognize my next step is the equalization board. But why did any homes increase in value during the greatest recession we've had? That's a question that just scares me. And when you read that 30% of the properties in Pitt County increased in value in the last four years. I have a hard time understanding it because I haven't seen it and neither have any of the people in real estate. Now, I tended to look at county commissioners' own properties with housing on it and yours came down 5.3% in aggregate. I think that's probably understated. It should have come down more. But I'd like you to think of logical explanations for this magical 30% increase in property values in Pitt County during the last four years. If you go for the revenue neutral solution, which I think you should, that means that I get to pay an extra $1,000 in taxes next year. My neighbors all pay between $200 and $700 extra taxes in a revenue neutral position. A lot of the affluent properties in uh, Pitt County, especially Greenville, came down. And they should have all come down. I'm not saying they came down unfairly. I'm saying ours shouldn't have gone up. Mr. Leach, we'll give you a couple of more extra minutes. The three minutes have gone off, but go on. If you uh, kind of wrap I up. Can, I can end up with two basic statements. Okay. We're not tax dissidents. We do want to pay our fair share. And the other reason Margie Fry is here is because we found out we learn a lot by listening, but we don't learn very much by talking. So I'd like to use her three minutes to donate to the commissioners to explain to us why you believe 30% of the property values came up in Pitt County. And I'd also like to know why you think West Haven came up. So I'm finished, but you have three minutes. If you can educate me, I'd greatly appreciate it because I just don't understand it. We respond. Let, I'll let the manager respond. We don't usually respond to public address, Mr. Leach, and I know that you were given some directions later, or, you know, previously. Uh, Mr. Elliott. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Just want to respond. Yes, Mr. Leach did appear here at the board's last meeting, and the tax department has heard his appeal on the first level of which is informal which is within the department they actually did go out to his to his property and look at his property properties plus I think some of those of his neighbors um, they're recommending that his appeal be taken on to your appointed Pitt County Board of Equalization and Review and scheduled f before them um, I recommend this follow the process that is established um, not only in the North Carolina Machinery Act but the, the process that you as a board have established as well um, I, I think it is fair to say that the far majority of all properties in Pitt County, about $6.3 billion worth of value did decrease. We only had about $2.5 billion that increased, and then about $250 million that stayed the same. But the far majority of all property in Pitt County did decrease. And we had about a six and a quarter percent overall 
decrease in, in value. But I'd recommend that you allow this to follow the, the process that is established. Okay. And Madam, Madam Chair, may I respond? Uh, yes. Could I ask one question sure. before I forget it, which I may? Was Ms. Fry's house in that group? Uh, Ms. Booker? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Owens? <coughs> I, uh, after receiving the package at our last meeting from this gentleman here, uh, called the county manager, and, and I, too, was uh, surprised that of the, how many, there were 34 home, or what? 57 of 50, 57, 57 out of them. Went up. And they went up to this, this, and that just feasibly and practically does not appear to be uh, proper, for lack of a better term. I, uh, I called you, sir, and I did not get to speak Very to you. Very nice message. Thank you. And uh, Scott, I called Scott to see if he could do some. Uh, why I'm saying all this is that this will not come back to us now until it goes to the state. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying procedurally, Scott? Well, technically, it doesn't come back to the Board of Commissioners. Since you've appointed a Board of VNR, it would the final, the third level of appeal would be the, to the North Carolina Department of Revenue for them to hear if they want to take it that far. That's why I'm speaking now. I think this board here should give some serious consideration to see if we can help solve this problem. And Scott, I think you, we got in our package today or yesterday where I don't know where my call prompted that or what you're going to do it anyway, but they went out and pulled out two parcels of out of that 57, went 50 whatever the number was. Those are his parcels. Those they, are they were just his parcels. So what I'm talking about then, None of your people went out to review this as, as from your standpoint, except that. Is that correct? Commissioner Owens, we might, might ask Kathy Booker to come forward, who's your, the tax administrator, because she's very familiar with the situation. If you're, I think you've answered my question, okay. but I still stand to the point that we as, as county commissioners, through council or whatever, need to review this to this. this there's an old adage in law that if, if the smell is not right, something is wrong. And to me, this falls within the purview of that. The, I Thank can you. say that the assessor's office did re-review Old West Haven, and they did look at two of Mr. Leach's properties and did make a slight adjustment down in two of his, like not to his, his liking to what he would he would like to see. But my understanding is Ms. Booker is standing by the, the values that had been placed on those properties in that neighborhood. May I ask a question? Well, I, I'd like to ask if there is a is there anything to indicate why all of those properties went up? And I wonder if that would be something we could hear from Ms. Booker without putting you on the spot. Would that be okay? Would you, do you mind coming forward and speaking to that? Do you understand what I'm asking? Is that what, what I felt sure there would be, there has to have been something that caused this to happen and, and um, I, I, a lot of people who are hearing this, um, if they've lived in Greenville a long time, know where Old West Haven and New West Haven is and how it come together. Okay. From our sales analysis of that area, um, we have come up with a price per foot, and all of our data um, indicates that that's the correct price per foot. We've done the review on the property, um, made some slight adjustments, and um, met with him informally, and he is not happy with that. So we have scheduled him for the Board of Equalization and Review, and they will also review all the data. Okay. So you're saying that this, the sales of <coughs> property in that area... In the neighborhood. In the neighborhood is used... Yes, to determine the analysis of uh, per square foot yes, as far as what it's um, price at. Or yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. James and then All right, Mr. James. you've got divided Pitt County into blocks. Into neighborhoods. Can, neighborhood, well, they're blocks. So you can tell me how many homes have been sold in his block or his, in his neighborhood. In how the, many in... <coughs> That's what I'm interested in. In the I'm neighborhood, in, some more too. in the neighborhood the, that is blocked as his neighborhood. Yes. Uh, for the appraiser, um, there were 12 in that that we looked. There at. were no foreclosures in that particular we group. We cannot look at for per North Carolina general statutes. Foreclosed sales are not arm's length transactions, and we cannot use those as our sales analysis. All right, and what you're saying is that those 12 sales, which were honest sales, were not bankrupt or anything such as that, 
those sales went up the percentage that you have carried his home or his property is that what you They saying? develop a base rate a square footage and that was what was used to apply to that neighborhood and it would and those homes went up that and much. that sales analysis will support that but he you know going to the board of equalization and review he will have an opportunity to present his case to the board of equalization and review <clears throat> but using that information every house is different square footage so that mm -hmm. was how it was determined but that's also how it's determined in all the neighborhoods in all the neighborhoods, in all the neighborhoods we develop our sales analysis <coughs> okay. for each neighborhood but did, did you say there were 57 homes in this particular how many homes is in this area? i did not bring that information with me i'm sorry the, the defined neighborhood could be bigger than old um west haven itself a neighborhood is a a, an, ass, an assessed area that they look at all the properties in could be yeah. could be larger probably is larger than old West Haven. But it itself. had to be they had 12 sales because that would that's a lot of sales in a very small place. It so is larger it, than just could, his particular. That's where section. we could have problems <laughs> with that an area outside of this was selling very high, but yet because you can have homes in one block to go up in value and because of what has taken place the homes in the next block might be off 25 percent and i know that to be true okay but anyway i think we okay. need to thank you thank you sir the question thank you. Thank you. The, the, the question i had was how many houses did they use for a a for comps uh to determine the value of these homes and you said it was 12 so that uh, answered my question okay mr webb my question was just what uh, time frame was used for the sales was it over the last year it goes to last four years last it's four the years. last four years four years, years. Last, four more, years more often the um the is like the last couple of years but sometime within the last four yeah but because the real estate market was a little two, better she said, for those two years. and three years ago but, than but it is this minute. year and last year and I think that might artificially inflate some values because, you know, for what you could sell a home in, in 2009 was different than what you can sell it today. I, I, I think somebody said, okay, look, James. I don't agree. We own a four-year rotation. Up until these last four years, we were on a eight-year rotation, if you remember. I do remember. All right. Now, you go back to that four years, and that's where it comes from up until then and the reason we did that is because of what's happened this time things have changed so much but this not in four years but in two years but it really went back four years is what's on the tax book and i don't care who says otherwise i went and got my four years back what it was when we had the reevaluation four years ago and that's really where you can tell it because you've been paying taxes for the last four years on what was done four years ago right but i think the question that mr webb asked was the sales and you said that they were more than likely within the last two to three years instead of the all the sales in the four years do you want to step up maybe that mic right there Right. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Webb? That's all. I, I, I'm just concerned. I know things dropped in 2008, but the housing market didn't follow an right. immediate drop with it. Right. Even here, we were selling a lot of houses in Pitt County. Right. And I'm just worried about an artificial inflation right. based on Madam that. Chair, I believe he did. All I need is another 30 seconds to basically say there were <coughs> four sales in our immediate area of 57 homes and all of them were unusual transactions. Buying low from the church, flipping it, and the sales values were all far in excess of the fair market value of the house as previously established. The other thing is, I provided appraisals that I paid $1,500 in my own pocket with the original informal revaluation appeal. And when I was told that they don't mean anything, that kind of 
got my attention. So I'll have it for the next round. Okay, that's what I was saying. That information I certainly would bring to the ER committee. Okay. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you for coming, Mr. Leach. Yes. yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Leach, uh, I just want to ask you a question. Was that the neighbor, the neighborhood that's surrounding your area, uh, was there a price increase? All of the houses in the new section of West Haven, which are approximately 15 to 20 years of age, went down in value. And everybody's property in Greenville should have gone down in value over the last four years. I'm not complaining about the ones that went down. They went down correctly. I'm complaining about the ones that went up magically without anything except program parameters and algorithms that can be severely flawed when you have a minimal statistical base. And let's face it, we haven't sold too many homes in Greenville, North Carolina in the last four years. Well, I Does that answer your question, Ms. Yeah, Paul? Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to ask Ms. Booker, you know, as I understand it, Ms. Booker, you said the price uh, per foot was a determination and also the uh, neighborhood sell, the sales analysis, sales analysis in the neighborhood. Were there any other? We develop our base rates off of the sales analysis. Were there any other factors? And, and this real estate is local in nature. That when we're a college town, we would not go down like certain other areas of the country. Okay. Um, the I think what we will do is we will stop our discussion of this because what we have heard is that we have followed the process that's in place. Mr. Leach followed it. He's done his research. Our next step is the Equalization and Review Committee, which we have in place for this reason, and that will give you your opportunity to bring this information that you brought here tonight and to them, and hopefully you'll get it resolved. Thank I'm not you. worried for myself. I am concerned about the 57 other people that aren't equipped to fight it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, our, we now have our items for report, and we'll hear from our manager for his report. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. First item, your next meeting date's April 2nd, 9 a.m., um, which I believe is next Monday morning, um, <laughs> week from today, <laughs> April 16th and at 6 p.m. Remind you, the next two items, March 30th, this coming Friday, uh, breakfast with the Pitt County Legislative Delegation at 8 a.m. We'll be meeting at Uptown Greenville at Winslow's on April 3rd. Um, this item was on your last agenda. The idea of creating um, voluntary agricultural districts, there'll be a workshop at the Agricultural Center, and that'll be at 8.30 on April the 3rd, which will be a Tuesday. Um, item D, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners will be holding a district meeting here in Eastern North Carolina at the Bob Martin um, Ag Center. This will be on April 26th at 5.30. And item E, the on April 30th at 8 a.m. will be the annual Shepherd Memorial Library Legislative Breakfast. Um, item F, the um, Pitt County Corporate Extension um, Agency Department has asked me to announce that they are applying for their fourth year of funding for the Community Technician, Community Garden Technician Grant Program. This will be through the Biden Medical Center Foundation um, grant process. And this grant is for $32,000. Um, item G, the Sheriff's Department asked me, Sheriff's Office asked me to announce that they are going to be applying for um, next year, and currently, but for next year for July 1, for the COPS grant application. They are seeking five positions. Um, and these positions are, normally you can't supplant if you lose a position because you're, you're, you're downgrading or you're, you're making your, your organization smaller, you can't supplant with these positions. But my understanding is this process is made for that, for that so that if we are laying people off or laying positions off or, or downsizing, these positions could um, backfill positions that we were to get rid of. The, um, <coughs> there is a 25% match on this, assuming five positions at a total salary with the benefits package of 50,000 to be used big round numbers. We're talking about a $63,000 in grant match. I did communicate to the sheriff knowing that we are um, um, have a very tough budget process in front of us. Uh, the A, yes, it is hard to pass up 75% funded positions, but at the same time, we'll need to identify where the funding for the grant match would come from within his budget or through the grant match process. At this point, they're just applying for the positions. 
technically, once we get into budget, once you get into budget, if you um, decide that the, or the size of the organization needs to be X versus Y, you could um, deny the, the funding, if, deny the acceptance of the, the COPS funding if you so choose. Okay. Um, item H, this is another Sheriff's Office item. Um, the jail medical services contract is up for renewal, and this is with East Carolina Medical Services. Uh, this is about a $1.7 million annual contract. This, the renewal will be for a, a three-year term. We have received great service out of this contract for, for many years, and we have, have looked in the past at, at bidding it out. I think we've even done that informally to compare what the cost would be. So I just want to make the board aware that we will be renewing that. Um, we actually have to give Dr. Survey, who's the, the lead doctor with East Carolina Medical Services, a 90-day notice. So he has an April 1st notice if we're going to pull out as such. So we'll be renewing that unless there's any concerns of the board. There is a 90-day clause in there, too, that if we decided that you wanted to go a different direction with jail medical services, you could do that with giving him a 90-day notice. But um, just bringing that to your attention. Uh, Scott. Yes, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. That service, again, you're saying that you're going to renew that? Correct. Great. Okay. okay. Um, item I is the list of events for National County Government Month for the month of April. This is on your last agenda. So just to bring that back to your attention a uh, second time. With that, Madam Chairman, that's all I have. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the items for consent. So moved. Second. Aye. Okay. Let's vote. And our next item is an item for discussion. Uh, Mr. Elliott. Yes, Madam Chairman and Board members. And page 53 is a, an agenda abstract entitled proposal to prohibit smoking in county buildings uh, commissioner webb asked me to put this on the agenda um, as a topic that he wanted the board to um, discuss that is why it's under items for discussion as background for this we have attached two different documents one that i asked the county attorney to put together regarding um, smoking in county facilities basically what the history is what the current law is um, mechanisms for regulation of it the second document is a document by the unc school of government entitled Smoking in Public Places, Recent Changes in State Law. It goes into further detail about this topic. Um, so with that, Madam Chairman, I'd turn to Commissioner Webb. Okay. I will just say that we had, um, didn't we have a copy of this it, in our Friday packet, no? We definitely had of it. Some it's, of the information. It's here in the agenda package. Uh, yes, I know it is. Okay. Thank okay, you, Madam Chair. Mr. Webb. Uh, this is something that came to my mind as a... Uh, or my attention as a member of the Healthy Living Task Force with the NCACC. But uh, also, I've had complaints from some county employees that have to use facilities where it is allowed inside. But I, I want to clarify before we get started, and just prior to Mr. James's objections, is that this is not about the <laughs> tobacco industry, use of the product, or farming it. It is about location of use only. And uh, so, Someone's right to use it and, and do what they want to with it will not be affected just the location in which they do it because other people's rights to breathe freely have somewhat been infringed according to what I've been told. And I, I think it's just good policy. I think for as much as we spend on health insurance anyway, and especially on the back end with some of the chronic diseases caused by this, that uh, we want to, to mitigate as much effect to non-smokers as possible. But I think it's just good policy. I mean, department right now, department heads have the ability to decide who can do what or who can smoke inside a building. Department heads change. I think it's time that we took a leadership position on it and established a policy. And tonight's vote, I, I'd like to remind my fellow commissioner, tonight's vote only, only directs staff to create a policy for our review and vote at a later time, and then we can debate the merits of that policy. That's all I've got okay. for now, Madam Chair. Okay. <laughs> One of my questions, and then I'll open it up for discussion. Um, Madam Attorney, do we have a policy in place now? I mean, yes. that's what's here. Is that called a policy? Um, there is no county policy in place that regulates smoking in county buildings, as, Mr. as Commissioner Webb is suggesting. There are rules within the health department um, that control smoking within that facility. And there are informal policies by department heads, but there is no county policy in place that would restrict smoking on county buildings, in county buildings, or on county property. Okay. And just to clarify, based on this information, the we have department heads 
by what right, in other words, what what or who told them they could do this, that they can say you may smoke or may not smoke within our working department? I, I as manager, have allowed the department heads to set that rule or that policy within their own department. Mm -hmm. They they though they do have to give the employees that smoke a place to smoke out, outside or in some departments, like in this building here within the 911 center, they either can step out the door or there is a internal break room that has a negative pressure fan that, that comes on when they're in there. The problem with the, um, the break room and the fan, the fan is an industrial fan that really sucks probably 95% of the smoke out, but there's still smoke getting into other areas of the basement that other employees who have actually signed petitions to have this, the smoking um, stopped. Um, down there, they're, they have complained. So that, that's the even though we do have allowed them an inside location, and they're kind of a tricky department because you can't you can't wander far from your telecommunicator position on a smoke break because if things get busy, you got to get back there quick. And if you're in another department, you might have the luxury and latitude to go down the stairs, out the door, have a smoke break for five ten minutes, come back in, and then proceed with your work. But down there, it's been more of a, a, a tricky area to accommodate yeah. but we've done our best to do, do it. Do we know how many uh, departments allow smoking within their building or area as far as the county is concerned? My, my not, to my knowledge right now only um, 911 and again they don't allow it in they used to allow it in the telecommunication center but that's been yeah, stopped I but they, they do allow it in next to it in a break room with a negative pressure but Fancy. anyone who wants to smoke presently is going outside now, mostly. Yes. Okay. All right. Any discussion based on well, that? Well, no, no. I, I, yeah. Excuse me. The attorney is reminding me buildings and grounds is, is probably the, the very far exception because, you know, the buildings and grounds operates out of a large shop environment. Front of the shop is um, offices and behind is an, is an open area where they congregate in the first of the day, the end of the day, the middle of the day for lunch. and. Um, probably the far majority of the employees of that department smoke. And that's another department that we have received, I have received written requests asking for a smoking ban to be implemented because they're complaining of secondhand smoke and the health issues that related to it. Okay. All right. Discussion. Mr. James, I saw your hand first. Yes. I believe we have too many rules and regulation and the federal government and the state government and the county government should step out of a lot of it. And uh, we did this before you came here scott we we had a we voted on this as a matter of fact that we would give it up to the departments to make those decisions and if they wanted their, the employees wanted to do it they could do it yeah, actually october 18th 1999 exactly we went back right watch the tape exactly right so now it's <laughs> been done we have a policy already and it, so how do you ever that it didn't go back because we had a heated argument pertaining to that. All right, but the thing about it is this, I believe that we infringe upon the rights of too many people, and these department heads, they have that right to say no, there will be no smoking. Now we did make the rules and the regulations for the courthouse, the new courthouse and so forth, where we gave it up to the judges, the judges brought it before us, and we designated, or they designated a certain era in that, that they could smoke. So, but I know smoking is not good for you, but you know, we're going to do a lot of things that's not good for us. If we could just do away with alcohol, drugs, all of these things. But uh, we'll pick, we pick on smoking and people who smoke all the time. And I, I don't like it. I don't think we ought to be infringing on these people. That's all, the, that's, that's really all I have to say about it. Okay. I'm going to vote my conviction. Okay, yeah, let's just start and go that way. Okay. I, I, I agree with Eugene part of what he says. That's hard to do, <laughs> but I do. But I think there are enough restraints federally and statewide to cover this issue, and I'm opposed to any changes in it. Okay. Um, Mr. McLaughlin? Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, Scott, how many other than buildings and grounds, and then I would like to know how many complaints have building and have you received from building and grounds and the, uh, and, I, and, and and the other departments, if any, have you received uh, complaints about secondhand smoke? The only two formal complaints, um, buildings and grounds, has been primarily one individual who is who has complained um, on numerous occasions, 
down in the basement of the county office building, probably almost all of the staff of the emergency management department have complained. All, majority of all of them are non-smokers. They've actually signed a, a formal petition to ask that all the smoking of 911 be done outside and not inside the building because it is leaking. Even though we are sucking the majority of it out through a negative pressure fan, there's still some that's, it's, the ladies complain they go home at night and their, their clothes smell of, of smoke and the, they're talking about the secondhand smoke consequences as well. I, I, I'm certainly, Madam Chair, I am a proponent of healthy living and healthy uh, environmental condition. Uh, however, I think that uh, if we can work out situations where uh, individuals can be away from uh, uh, infringing on others in secondhand smoking, I think that we need to do that. And I think that you know we need to you know really seriously look into a, a situation where that can be handled. I don't know whether we we may need to uh, revisit some of the situations that are that are that are not being handled, but uh, I certainly think that if we can uh, handle those individuals without having to get this policy another policy in place, as uh, Commissioner James said, I think that I would certainly not uh, be uh, for this policy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Seal. I realize that. Smoking is very offensive to some people. I'm probably like Mr. James a little bit. I don't like the government telling people what they need to do or what they can do. But on the other hand, you look at if you're around a person that smoke and you are about to buy an insurance policy, that smoke from that other person will be picked up by you. It's a hard decision to make for me from the point that I've raised tobacco all my life and I hate to do anything for tobacco that will expedite the exit of it but I think it's just about exiting in Pitt County when you look at the number of farmers <coughs> that are available. The health issue is a primary concern, but if we could work something out on a policy where these people could smoke without influencing other people, that would probably be the way to go. Uh, we need a policy that will speak to that and ensure that the smoke does not disturb anyone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Garris. I'm Chair, I think it was very interesting to look at the chronology of events on page 54 in our agenda package. Yeah. In 1993, the General Assembly enacted smoking laws that required state and local governments to allow smoking in government buildings in 1993. And then in 2006, the General Assembly enacted laws prohibiting <laughs> smoking in the state legislative buildings. So we've had a long history of uh, back and forth on this issue. I do. Uh, am strongly supportive of the rights of individuals to make their own decisions that impact their lives. However, when they make a decision that impacts other people's lives, then I have to be concerned about that. And of course, according to the studies, secondhand smoke is not good for us either. So I would really like for us to find a balance here that would protect the non-smoker while also not infringing upon the rights of those who choose to smoke. Now, according to what I've heard, there is essentially only two places in the county, in county buildings, where smoking is going on, as, as I understood correctly. To, to my knowledge, uh, yes. In 911 and, and, and at ground. So, if we could come up with some kind of policy that would eliminate those concerns while still allowing those who choose to smoke have the right to do that, then I would surely be uh, supportive of looking at that procedure. Okay, Commissioner Johnson. Madam Chairman, I'm still listening. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Webb, do you? Just some little rebuttal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I thought you just might make a motion. I am, but okay. I want to follow oh, something wait. up. <laughs> no, right uh, when, when we talked about our policy, we're not talking about another policy. We're talking about changing the policy. And we've changed policies before that were outdated or different. The, the, 
conditions on the ground change. This isn't an assault on tobacco, the industry, or farmers. It is only about location of use. It has nothing to do with what someone chooses to put in their body. That's not what we're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I, I fully support someone's right to smoke if they want to, but your right to engage in a behavior ends up my right not to engage in that behavior. And if I'm breathing secondhand smoke, I'm now engaging in your behavior. Uh, secondly, or lastly, I would say, well, two more things. Uh, employees are our most valuable resource. We know that. And the least we can do is provide them with a work environment that they can all enjoy. If you want to engage in smoking, that's fine. There will be a smoking area. If you don't want to engage in it, then you should be able to sit in your office or cubicle or vehicle and not have to engage in that behavior. And, and lastly, before my motion, I would say that um, you look at, and this is coincidental on, on timing, but what's happened with the bar owners? These are private citizens who put private money into a private business where private citizens attend, yet the county health department goes and says, you can't allow certain behaviors in your bar yet in the public buildings that their tax dollars go to pay for, we say it's okay as long as the department head likes it. It seems a little hypocritical to me that we're enforcing something that we don't ourselves do. And, uh, and again, tonight's vote is only for staff to create a policy for us to approve later. We can say it all again. And uh, with that, I'd have a motion that we direct staff to create a policy banning smoking from or addressing the smoking issue within county facilities and vehicles. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All right. Um, if we'll vote and the motion is to have staff look at a policy to recommend back to us to consider at a later date. Okay. Okay. Okay, it passes and the staff is so directed. Okay. All right, our next um, item is an item for decision and Mr. Dickerson, if you'll come forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. As you all know, we have um, quite a few heavy buildings in this area. Hospital, county office building, some medical school and other buildings and Say your signals have trouble penetrating those buildings. Uh, USA wants to solve the problem for their company. Uh, they have a two-site solution in mind. There will be one additional tower somewhere in the vicinity of the shopping center, and they would like to place one tower where it's actually a mast or a pole, like a big old flag <coughs> flagpole. Uh, the site that they that we've looked at that we think was probably best for them I don't use this thing often enough it always puzzles me to something. What was that sound music coming from the television? Difficulties, something like that, but something. Wrong clicker. Yeah, something like that. As you can see, um, we have a Ronald McDonald House, the site that's proposed over to the right, Pitt Area Transit Building, and the area in the bluish color is um, actually owned by the hospital now. So the proposed site would be right in the corner of our um, property and be a 50 by 50 site with a paved driveway to it. And we're requesting that you authorize us to negotiate a lease with USA for this site. Mr. Mike Doran with USA is here if you have any questions of him. Okay. Um we have some information about this in our packet and we've had it. Um, does anyone have a question they'd like to ask Mr. Dickerson or Mr. Dorton? Okay. I've got Mr. Garris and then Mr. Uh, James. I, I don't have a problem with doing this because I want us to be uh, perceived as being good partners with our medical facility and this will uh, uh, allow them to have a better 
quality of communication. What I don't know is, this is a prime piece of property, and what I don't know is, according to our notes here, uh, the proposal is $1,500 a month. I don't know whether that's high, low, or what. What I would be interested in is getting <coughs> that rate as high as we possibly can. Uh, and I guess what we are doing this evening, as I understand, is giving staff the authority to negotiate that's correct. Uh, uh, a lease, and you will negotiate that as high as possible. Correct. Okay. Mr. Garris, I would say we, we started at 1100 so we're, we're moving upward. Very good. Keep going. Okay, <laughs> Mr. James. All right. Does it have any impact upon the value of the property that's there that the county has or anything such as that, Phil? Of course it would have an impact on the property around And it's a negative, too, isn't it? So you need to consider that, as Commissioner Garris was talking about. I'm certain we want to do whatever we can for that. But at the same time, we know that the hospital is making how much? $49 million? Well, this is not the hospital issue. Well, say, or, that's what well the who's the benefit? You, me. Oh, well, that's whoever a good thing, isn't it? Whoever's called but anyway, let's get what we can. But I certainly we want to cooperate and work with them. But it, we need to, and I know when they go out and rent a uh, place to put up a, 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 out in rural areas, it's, it's kind of high that they pay so much. But we get about, I think the highest site fee we get on our actual towers Two thousand dollars a month. Two thousand. But that's the so you feel like we could, you feel like that they can go with two thousand without any trouble, don't you? I don't know. I think that. so. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to. We'll have to talk. We're on the right same page, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Dickerson, we had a question up here, yeah, and we wanted the answer to be heard. By One other thing that I don't see in the abstract here is how long this contract would be for. It would be uh, up to thirty years. Up to 30, but yes. two five year periods, though, correct, Madam Attorney? Um, yes, and the um, if you lease property, you'll have to follow the uh, rules for disposition of county property. If it is, with, and those rules in a nutshell are that if it's less than one year, um, you can negotiate that lease with the board's approval and enter into it. If it's under um, 10 years in the aggregate with all renewal periods included, then you'll have to provide notice of that. And if it's longer than 10 years, you'll have to treat that as a sale of property under the North Carolina general statutes. And so when it comes back to you, if that's what you direct, um, or uh, within the authority of the manager, we'll have to be sure that all of those rules are complied with as it relates to the time period. Um, and that may make a difference when we negotiate as well uh, with the U.S. Cellular, if that's what the board directs us to do. So you could go 10, 10, 10, as far as the 30-year out. And you so. would need to then treat it as a sale because 10 three-year periods in the aggregate would be 30 years. Okay, so and we would not be doing that. Yes. What I would like to see personally is the shortest contract possible with the highest lease possible. That's my two requests. To make a motion. <laughs> so then I, yes. I was going to go and make a motion that we authorize staff to negotiate the lease. Second motion. Okay, and Mr. Right, Owens to coming. To negotiate to bring it back for approval to this board. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. Mr. Smith. This tower is not going to be in the way of any aircraft. Is it, uh, they would have to get permission from FAA. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it won't bother any of the equipment in the surrounding areas negatively. I mean, it shouldn't. We have uh, different companies within different antennas around this building within 50 feet of each other. Okay. So, should be okay there. I think we're about ready to move. Okay, we've got oh, the motion of the floor, Mr. McGowan. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I like to ask. What, what's, what's your name, sir? Mr. Doran. Mr. Doran, I ask okay, you a question. You'll come to the mic so we can. How, how many uh, how many U.S. cellular uh, towers do you have in in, in Greenville Pitt County area? How I don't know exactly how many towers uh -huh. there are. We have we have five new ones proposed right now. Two in the county. Three in the city. It, it, and, 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 and I think I know the answer, but what's the purpose of having additional towers? Uh, capacity. 
okay. and in building coverage. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. Oh, <laughs> you're scaring me. <laughs> He's just speaking for all of us, so it's not just him. <laughs> okay. But thank you very Five much. Minutes. Don't be afraid. <laughs> It might get worse. No, I take that. <laughs> Do you need one in the Southern County? <laughs> um, okay, um, that's it. Um, except commissioner's comments, right? Oh, we got to vote on this. I'm sorry. We were just going to make it a done deal. Let's vote. Now. Commissioner comments. We'll start with you, Mr. Owens. No, ma'am. No comments. Mr. James. Okay. Mr. Lord. I'd just like to uh, congratulate uh, uh, a young lady who has, uh, Mrs. Floyd, who has uh, achieved a milestone of 100 years old, and she's going to be celebrated uh, on this coming Saturday. Congratulations. Okay. Smith. I got a couple of things. Maybe it won't take over 30 minutes. <laughs> I thought I was going to beat Mr. Owens tonight. <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring something to this Board of Commissioners and make the public aware of it. There hasn't been that much publicity about it. Last Wednesday night, I went down on the other side of Plymouth to the Vernon James Center, which is a university, state university farm, and they're starting a school down there on the Vernon James Center. There's a lot of room down there for this school. The first year they are projecting to have 60 students. The next year it will grow to at least 120. And the students will come from five counties. I mean, it's... Uh, Slated to send students. They are Pitt, Beaufort, Martin, Washington, Turrell. How many is that? I don't even remember. That's five. That's five. And this school is going to <coughs> be a school, a high school. They start with the high school and then gradually will have some lower grades. And it's going to be tailored to biotech and math and science. When you look at why they picked the Vernon James Center, it's it's area. It has the space for the students. It has classrooms there, and it has also laboratories there. The Vernon James Center has been uh, used by State College to look at growing different crops for biodiesel. And I think when you look at the price of diesel fuel and gas in in this area or throughout the United States, you're gonna to have to realize that this non replaceable fossil fuel that we've been using, we're gonna to have to go another route. Of course there's a lot of fossil fuel available to the United States if we would only use it. But over a period of years, I think some alternate fuel is going to be what the people are going to need and want. And this is just a start. There's already other communities in North Carolina wanting a school like this in the Piedmont and one in the mountains. They're looking at the Vernon James Center, how the curriculum is going to be written. They're going to still use the same credits that it takes a student to graduate from high school, but it's going to be science, chemistry, and tailored towards creating renewable fuel for the future. They're already growing a couple of crops down there that they're using for, to make biodiesel widen. It's a very expensive process uh, to, to do, but with technology that has advanced in the last couple of years and will continue to advance, it's going to be financially feasible to produce this from crops grown by the farmers. When you look at North Carolina, agriculture is the biggest economic uh, engine in the state of North Carolina. 
It's about $70 billion a year what agriculture contributes to the economic engine of North Carolina. That's more than twice the amount of the next two. The next one is tourist industry, but it's less than half of what the uh, agriculture segment produces. And in Virginia, there's this company that's already set up to produce it from farm uh, products. They contract with the farmers to grow it, and they make biodiesel. This is one thing that I wanted to talk about. It's probably at some point in time for the commissioners here to have a workshop with this fellow that's in Virginia and someone from State College to talk to us about what's the potential and what uh, will happen in years to come as technology advances in this area. And the next thing, uh, many of you probably know that the school board is going to be using uh, biodiesel next year, or, or short, yes, it's next year, I think. There's this company that's going to set up a system in Pitt County to furnish all the school buses with <coughs> cooking oil to run the school buses. And this is a tremendous saving, saving for the school board, uh, over $700,000 a year. With cooking oil <coughs> from the local restaurants, there's more than enough in Pitt County to fund all the school buses and then some. To, to use cooking oil, it's not that great a process to use it in any diesel motor. It'll run just as good as diesel fuel. I, I have and am running in a truck that I have. The main thing, you got to go through a process of cleaning this oil, getting the impurities out, and it will burn just as good as diesel fuel at a whole lot cheaper rate. Uh, you still had to pay federal tax, road tax on it, Unless they've changed the law in the last year, there's no state tax on it. And uh, it's a process that if they can get the cooking oil from all the restaurants in Pitt County, there's a whole lot more than the school system would use. This is just another way that you can take a byproduct that years ago it was a hassle to get rid of now there's a sale for it for people that are running it in the truck. There's a farmer not too far from me. He runs it <coughs> in the combine, tractors, trucks, and his car. He cleans it up. It's a simple process to clean it up. It takes a little time. But when he gets through cleaning it up, it looks just as good as cooking oil that you buy at the store. It gets all the batter that's put on chicken or fish or whatever on it. I have used it both ways and if you don't get the batter on it, your uh, filter doesn't last long. But clean cooking oil, it'll last six months in a truck or filter. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. No comment. Mr. Judge. As, as I attend the uh, school board meetings the the school board and the superintendent and staff are working very hard now on uh, unitary status and uh, they will need to present the facts to the federal judge mr howard uh and and they're they're making every effort to uh, get complete and accurate information to present to the judge I just encourage all of us to be at the Shepherd Memorial Library breakfast on April 30th. They're doing a lot with very little, and we need to be careful about reducing their budget any further because they're in danger of losing state funding if we don't maintain a certain level. And uh, last comment would be just a motion for adjournment. Uh, a second to that motion. Sorry. Okay, let's vote.
Okay, we are dismissed. Thank you very much, gentlemen.